She is considered to be one of the greatest athletes ever in what is one of the world's deadliest extreme sports, free diving. Natalia Malchinova went for a dive on Sunday and she simply vanished. And tonight, as her family gives up hope, ABC's Matt Gutman takes us inside a dangerous and increasingly popular sport. Tonight, the two-day underwater search for a champion of the deep called off. 53-year-old freediver Natalia Molchanova, seen here in a 2013 Ada video, vanished on Sunday off the coast of Spain into the depths she had spent a lifetime exploring. The mother who came to the sport late in life is regarded as one of the greatest freedivers in the sport's history. A sport that demands participants push their bodies to the limit, holding their breaths while they dive underwater as deep as far as they can. Molchanova currently holds dozens of freediving records chronicled on her website, including for breath hold over nine minutes and depth over 400 feet, more than two Statue of Liberties stacked torch to base. She'd also mastered the pool, swimming nearly 800 feet, two and a half football fields on a single breath. But this weekend, it was a shallow recreational dive, barely 100 feet that may have killed her. Sport officials say she disappeared off the coast of the island of Ibiza, where currents were strong. The sport's governing body, Ada, writing her friends lost her, tried to look for her, and then called for help. The surface search is still continuing, but today, Molchanova's son, Alexei, a champion freediver himself, told the New York Times that it seems she'll stay in the sea. I think she would like that. Her peers in the diving world echoing the statement. Her death is a huge loss to the freediving community. She was this very goal-oriented, driven freediving machine. World-class freediver Tanya Streeter had competed against Molchanova many times. There isn't a, a freediver who had a record that hasn't been beaten by Natalia Molchanova. Streeter took us breath by breath through the training it takes to be the best. Right before I dive, I spend some time in the water just doing some breathing exercises to lower my heart rate. So that last breath can create enough pressure inside the lungs that it inhibits the heart from beating properly. It has a narcotic effect. It makes you feel a little high, or I, I like to say that it, it makes me feel like half a glass of wine on an empty stomach, just a little bit loopy. While increasingly popular, freediving is considered one of the deadliest extreme sports. It has claimed many of its greats, like Audrey Mistray, seen here in her final dive in 2002, and more recently, Nicholas Mavoli. Never take a dive for granted. You don't know what you don't know what dive is going to be your last. This is the most dangerous sport in the world. I would say so, except maybe competitive Russian roulette. For former record holder Kirk Kroc, it's that dance with danger that attracts him and so many others to the sport. You're taking your body where it seriously doesn't want to go to the point where it's, everything is contracting yeah. in your body. Why? Why? Do people want to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's, you know, what can you do? What are we capable of as a species? That's the draw for a lot of people. Considered the foremost authority on freediving education, Croc lent his skills to help make the movie The Cove, and even trained David Blaine for his special, Just relax. Drowned Alive. So catch your breath, we'll do one last one. Just I experienced some of the intense mental and physical discipline necessary in this sport, taking a turn in the water in the Cayman Islands, trained by Croc to hold my breath for as long as a freediver. First, the breath hold. All these lessons, the breathing, and the mental calisthenics geared to teaching me to ignore my body's cry for oxygen. See those convulsions? My body demanding to breathe, but that's the point. Croc trains you to ignore it. And after an hour of instruction... Up. Breathe, 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 breathe. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good, good, solid time. I mean, for someone who's a freediver already, so that's a great time. That's an amazing time. And freedivers are pushing the limits of their sport in many ways. Croc himself runs an underwater obstacle course where freedivers compete using water scooters. All in the hopes of winning a thousand bucks and, more importantly, 
bragging rights. Others like William Winram and Fred Buell push the limits even further by holding their breath while swimming with sharks. You don't think about uh, the fact that you're not breathing, that you are deep, that you need air. The animals tend to come closer to you. They don't uh, hear me, they don't feel me around them. It's all about the challenge and the thrill, but the pressure and lack of oxygen down there mean blackouts underwater are common. While these guys were revived, it seems like Molchanova might not get that chance. While the very depths she conquered might have claimed her, it was in those depths that she felt most at peace, saying in an interview just last year, when we go down, if we don't think, we understand we are whole, we are one with the world. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Los Angeles.